Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms, with my co-host, Dale Terry. You can find us over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin and at Dynasty underscore Dale. And welcome back to another episode of the 2023 offseason changes, recapping all 32 teams for you guys in the entire month of July, dropping so many of these videos. It's crazy. Uh, we're going through the AFC West right now with the Kansas City Chiefs. If this is your first one, welcome into the series. Please go check out our other videos. We're doing all 32 teams, so, you know, giving all our thoughts on all of them. But a lot of people's favorite team right now is Chiefs. I, I could, I don't know why. It's not. It, it, they must be good or something. But, uh, yeah, if you guys are coming back, welcome back. Thank you guys for checking out other videos as well. Dale, how are we doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Um, I'm doing well overall. Um, we are actually recording these a little early, so... Uh, we are going to the 4th of July and we're excited to talk about some fireworks in the Kansas city offense here. Hey, what a segue. I like it. Yeah, I like I, it. I do my best. <laughs> All right. So the podcast is available on YouTube, Spotify, Google, Apple, everywhere the podcasts are found while you're over there. If you don't mind just leaving a subscription, leaving a comment, just a like, it only takes you a couple seconds and it really helps us out getting the podcast out to more people. We appreciate you guys checking us out and helping us out as well. So that said, if this is your first time, the way that we're going to break this down, and if you're coming back every single day, this is going to get real repetitive real quick, but thank you guys for sticking it out. Anyway, we're going to go through the coaching staff changes at the top, and then we're going to go through the players that they added in the offseason, the free agents that they added. We're going to go through the guys that they lost, the free agents that they lost, and then the draft, recapping that quickly and then we're going to go through all the positional players um skill position players at the end and given our dynasty thoughts and the dynasty impacts from all these changes as a whole and uh you know on this season and a couple seasons in the future as well so that said dale any last thoughts nope all right so coaching staff changes pretty small here um just a few minor positional changes you know Andy Reid's still the head coach they you know Eric Bieniemy was hired by the Washington Commanders to be their offensive coordinator it was a positional swap but I think that Kansas City was willing to let him kind of go and and see what he can do on a offense without Andy Reid because mm -hmm. Eric Bieniemy that's kind of been the big you know specter that's been hanging over him, right, is that they don't yeah. know. Nobody knows if Eric Bannemi can actually run a good offense without Andy Reid. We have no idea. People mm -hmm. say yes. People say no. He has any idea because Andy Reid is a good offensive coordinator. So um, Eric Bannemi goes over to Washington. They lose him, but they promote Matt Nagy. Internally, he was a quarterback coach last year, former head coach for the Chicago Bears. I actually like Matt Nagy's offense a little bit. I think he got a bad shake um, in Chicago. At least the offense in Chicago was always good for what he had to work with. I mean, obviously, at this point in time, we can say that Mitch Trubisky was just a bad quarterback. Nick Foles, it seems like Doug Peterson was able to work whatever magic out of him until he was tapped out. And I just, I, I don't think that they, he had what, half a season with, with Justin Fields and wasn't able to really, mm -hmm. the roster was just terrible by the time that Matt Nagy really kind of got Fields going in that season. So, I don't think he ever got a fair shake, to be fair, but, you know, he's back under Andy Reid, and I think this is where he can really shine because he's got some oversight with, with Reid there. So um, other than that, nothing really major uh, that changed on the offense or in the coaching tree. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on those positional changes? Any, yeah, any I, I, yeah, I don't think there's a huge impact because really Andy Reid is the guy that runs that offense. Um, I, I think – even though Matt Nagy is the offensive coordinator, he's he's more of like a, uh, I guess you can say co-offensive coordinator with Reed. Right, so, right. I mean, I don't think it's going to really do much. And I think, I mean, I know, I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with your take that he had a bad shake in, uh, in Chicago, but um, also I don't think he was ready to be head. I mean, th th there are just some coaches that aren't meant to be head coaches. Yeah. I just, don't know, man. Just, Cause just, if you go back just, to that I, first I, season, right. And I get it. A lot of it was defense. They were one double so doink defense. away from the, yes. what was the NFC championship or the yes. Super Bowl? One yes. of the two. It, it, it was NFC championship. Yeah. And that, that was, was the year that, that the Eagles, Eagles won. Right. So won. yeah, they were close, but so, yeah, and I get I, it. I know, I but, but you know, I don't think, 
I, I like there's just some coaches that aren't aren't meant to be head coaches and are and are better served being an offensive or defensive coordinator. I also agree with that as well. So so you know yeah I, I just don't think Matt Nagy has that personality type and right. I think he's 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 just best served here. So yep. You know, other than that, there's really no big changes. I think I think it's more. Of, I think going from Nagy to BN or from BNM to Nagy is more of a lateral move, right? And it's not going to make that much of a difference, right? Yep, I'm with you there. All right, so, so a couple guys that they re-signed: um, Kendall Blanton, tight end; DiCaprio Boodle, uh, cornerback; um, Mark or sorry, Mike uh, Caliento, a guard. Ole Christensen, a linebacker, Jerry and Ely. It's funny that they have him listed as a wide receiver. He was actually a running back, so I, maybe he made mm, a positional yeah. change. I'm not sure. Uh, Ty maybe. Fry Fugel, that's a fun name. He's another wide receiver that they re-signed. Chris um, Lodakun, quarterback. Michael P. Ryan, running back. That's a name I haven't heard in years now. Uh, Cornell mm-hmm. Powell, a wide receiver. Austin Ryder, um, center. John Ross, another wide receiver that they re-signed. Dude, this team has to have the most mediocre wide receivers in the entire NFL. That, yeah, and but they have Patrick Mahomes, yeah. so it doesn't matter. Danny Shelton, defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. Daniel Wise, another DT, and then um, Amir Smith Marset, a wide receiver, and a couple guys that they brought in. This is where they got a few more interesting names. Drew, Tra- Drew Tranquil, linebacker from the Chargers, stolen away from the divisional rival. I always find those yeah. fun. Um, yeah, it's 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 very interesting when they switch switch teams like that, and and I I I almost feel that they're going to bring in trade secrets, but right, it it, it doesn't always work like that. True, um, Chris Chris Williams, D tackle out of Indy, um, Jawan Taylor. This was a massive signing by them, mm-hmm. uh, replacing Orlando Brown, who we'll talk about yep. here in just one minute from the Jaguars. Uh, Donovan Smith, another tackle. So really trying to make sure that offensive line stays good. Uh, Sebastian Guter, Guter, Guterhertz, um, another tackle that they brought in. Blaine Gabbert, Super Bowl winning Blaine Gabbert to replace <laughs> um, their former backup, Chad Henney, who retired this offseason. Mm-hmm. So have to have that solid backup, and that's where Blaine Gabbert fits in there. Uh, defensive end, Brian Cowart, uh, Matt Dickerson, another DE, um, and then Charles Amenahu, uh, defensive t- end out of mm-hmm. the Niners. Um, cornerback Lamar Jackson, Phil Hoskins, a defensive tackle, and Mike Edwards, a safety. So, oh, and Richie James, wide receiver out of the Giants. So, nothing big on the guys that they added, oh. really, or re signed. Um, but the Chiefs have been such a machine the last couple of years. As And as long as they have Patrick Mahomes, it doesn't really seem to matter. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's really much impact there. Any thoughts on those guys? No, I mean, I I think the big thing is is that they did lose Chad Henney, which he 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 was a very solid backup That's true. quarterback. That is true. They, you know, he um, did save them what twice in the in the playoffs. He he saved them at least once against the Browns, especially right. like they should have lost that game. Right. In in all in all honesty. Um. And then that drive, and, remember where Mahomes wasn't sure if he had a knee anymore or something. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I, I I I I can't remember which game, but yes, that that that, that like he was a solid a solid backup, and I I do think Blaine Gabbert's is pretty solid. Yeah, I, I don't I think mean, it's he's, much he's, of a loss at all. No, no, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's that big of a loss. But you know, having all that knowledge as a backup, you know, being yeah. able to come in and to really execute that style of offense, like it's a yeah. very it's a very advanced offense, and yeah, knowing was... it and being able to run it is 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 very important. Yeah, he was with the Chiefs for five years, so you know it, it is going to be a little bit of a, a road bump for Blaine Gabbert to get up to speed. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, hopefully he's never needed because Patrick Mahomes is yep a star. He's yeah, he's yes. one. He might be end up being the goat. You know, taking it from Tom Brady. And as a Patriots fan, that's hard for me to admit, right? So, um, all right, a couple players that they lost this last year. Some big names here, actually. Some really big mm-hmm. names, actually. Um, Orlando Brown Jr., left tackle. He went over to the Cincinnati Bengals. We talked about him yep. a little bit earlier in one of our other episodes. Go check that one out. Frank Clark, uh, defensive end. He was cut. Carlos Dunlap, another defensive end. Um, Kayleen Saunders, a defensive tackle. So their defensive line took a pretty big hit. Big hit, uh, yeah. Lost Miko Hardman. They lost Juju Smith-Schuster. They lost um, a couple wide, wide receivers, if you're not aware. Chris Lehman's a cornerback. Um, 
Ronald Jones, the running back. Haven't heard that name in a while. Juan Thornhill, safety, and then another tackle, Andrew Wiley. So, you know, they lost, lost both their left and right tackles, and that's obviously why they had to go after Donovan Smith and Juwan Taylor this offseason. So, you know, it, it's always hard when you, you're paying your quarterback a half a billion dollars to keep some of these mm-hmm. guys. But uh, the Chiefs, again, they've been a machine, so obviously they're able to do it. But this is one of the most expensive offensive lines now in the entire NFL. I think they're paying um, over $100 million to these five players. So it, it's it's a lot. Wild. It is a lot. Yes. So, um, any thoughts on the guys that they cut? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I do agree that they did lose a lot of big names, but – they were a lot of older names sure. that, that had big cap hits. I mean, yep. I still like Frank Clark. Um, you know, he just wasn't worth guess, the money, right? Yeah, he was. He wasn't. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of him morally what he did back in college, but that's <laughs> right. that was many many years ago. Um, and he's and he's turned out to be a good player. Um, I think I th- I, th- I think losing Hardman and Juju could be interesting, right? Um, we'll t- because, yeah, we'll break down the wide receivers here in yes. just a minute, but yeah, it's y- yes because they didn't really get a lot of a lot of replacement names, I guess yeah. you can say back, you right. know, I mean, there, there are players there, but I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know if the names are there. Sure. Um, a couple guys that they did draft, you know, Felix and Duque Uzama defensive end in the first round end of the first round there. Um, they won the Super Bowl, So obviously they're pick 31. I, it was throwing me off here for a second, <laughs> but there was only 31 first round picks this year. Cause yep. your dolphins got, Thing for that um Rasheed Rice wide receiver out of SMU was their second pick pick number 55 we'll talk on him in here in just one minute Wanya Morris tackle out of Oklahoma in the third round in the fourth uh Chamari Connor safety out of Virginia Tech in the fifth round BJ Thompson linebacker out of SFA Stephen Aw- Stephen F mm-hmm. Austin never Austin. heard of that college yep. actually um sixth round DeAndre Coburn, defensive tackle out of Texas. And then in the seventh round, Nick Jones, cornerback out of Ball State. So, again, just kind of – I'm surprised that they kept all seven picks. They still ended with seven picks, which was surprising. They moved around the board a lot. but A uh, lot, a lot. Yeah, so they got yeah. good value, in my opinion, on a lot of these guys. So, again, they're just kind of a machine right now. Yeah, no, and I agree with that. Like, um, I mean, they were just trying to reload on, on – on the defensive side and they got Rasheed Rice, which they traded up for Rasheed Rice, which yeah. I was a little, that's a little mm-hmm. surprising. Yeah. They traded um, up um, to take him like, over some of the guys that we really liked, you know, like Cedric Tillman would have been such a good pick for this, but he, and he went in the third, but uh, yeah. 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 It was, it was just interesting to see. Um, and then they got, and then they traded up again in, in, in the third round to get a tackle, um, which it's going to be interesting to see how much they spend on Creed Humphrey coming up because, right. uh, because I think he was a second round pick. I think, yes, yeah. he, yes, he was a second round pick a couple years ago. He's, yeah. So, yeah. So, so like, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's, it's going to come due for him to, to it's, it's to get another, a big contract. So, right. you know, and then, and then these other guys that are, that are down further, like, I think these are just Jags, you, you know, like they're just another guy here on yeah, here, you never here know, the sure so. up. Yeah, they could so they could turn into something or or not. We have no idea, or but. Be, or be absolutely nothing. Yeah, right. So, yeah. um, offensive line wise, recapping, I think the defense. You know, hard to say. I don't think it got worse. I think it might have even gotten a little bit better with some of the signings that they made. Um, I like Felix Uzama uh, that they replaced Frank Clark with, so shouldn't be a, a massive downgrade. Now Frank Clark mm-hmm. is is good, but he wasn't worth yep. his contract, right? Don't get right. me wrong, Felix Uzama has a massive um, learning curve to get up to Frank Clark's level, but uh, you know you're paying him almost nothing for being a first round pick. So um, yeah, you'll like to see. Hopefully, he can play near that level without the massive price tag. Um, the offensive line is interesting. I don't want to say it's going to be better or worse. But there is going to be a learning curve. I mean, you brought in two new tackles for this team. Mm -hmm. Switching out tackles is not plug and play. It's not easy. It's not easy. 
Yeah, sometimes these guys just take time to gel together. And when mm-hmm. you had guys like Orlando Brown, who was with the team for, I think, two years, right? Or one year? I think it was two. Um, yeah, but, two. you know, when you have guys that are here for multiple seasons, replacing them is tough, right? So, um, luckily, they are, they have so many guys. That they'll figure it out by training camp, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. It, it could be detrimental. We saw Patrick Mahomes with a bad offensive line was not able to be mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes, right? So right, yeah, and, and and like I don't think his offensive line is going to be any worse than any worse than it was last year. Sure, you know, Hopefully. and 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 it does and it does help that Mahomes does have that mobile side of him, and he's right. still able to move. And really, like I mean, un, I mean, I guess unfortunately, there's a lot of Kansas City games that are on prime time that we <laughs> are forced to watch yep. every week. And um, I would love that's it if they just story. had like Tyreek back, man. Because yeah, the problem yeah. is, and we'll okay, we'll yeah. talk about it here in just a second. But yeah, yeah but, they just have no yeah, guy yeah. other than Kelsey. And it's like I'm tired of Travis Kelsey doing it. It's what's that Breaking Bad meme? He can't keep getting away with this. Yeah, like, exactly. ow, man, yeah. ow, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right, so quarterback wise, Patrick Mahomes, Blaine Gabbert. There's not really much to talk about. Patrick Mahomes is still a top two, three dynasty quarterback. There's mm-hmm. no downside coming yep. in the foreseeable future. I mean, hundred percent. The only thing that we could possibly see is once Travis Kelsey retires or takes a step back, maybe that impacts Patrick Mahomes. Um, uh, maybe, but until that happens, like he's just he. He's just special. Like I said, he might mm-hmm. end up being the goat after all all said and done. <laughs> I yeah. I would not be surprised there. Um the more interesting position is the skill players across all the positions, right? So running backs, you've got Jerrion Ely, who's marked as a wide receiver, but is a running back, so it's interesting. He's listed here as a running back. Um yeah. Clyde Edwards Lair, the failed first round pick there. Jarek McKinnon re signed, which you like to see mm-hmm. that. Uh, they have Isaiah Pacheco, and then I've seen so many freaking hype pieces on Daenerys Prince as well. Yeah, they don't yep. even look that exciting. It's like him cutting is not even the best footwork. So, right here's the question: Isaiah Pacheco, he is the rushing guy for this team, almost definitively, right? He does not catch passes. That's just not his game. Mm-hmm. I don't even like his running game. I think he it's he, it's violent. It's Dude, he violent. just needs to smoke less crack. That's like his yeah, legs are too it's busy. Just violent over and over and over. Yeah, it's not. Crazy. I don't even know. Like when I watch him play, I don't even think it's violent. I think it's like spastic. That's that's the one downside, right? Where that's fair. He literally move. He moves too much. It's like, dude, you just need to yeah. calm down, like a little bit and maybe that's his running style and it's just awkward to watch but it just looks weird and i don't like it um a lot of people are talking about pacheco though whether he's worth investing in for dynasty um again he's not going to catch hardly any passes Jarek mckinnon's probably going to be the pass catcher and then clyde is just kind of the hybrid of both of them where he's going to do a he's kind of the change of pace guy what are we doing with these these uh these running backs I, I, the only one I honestly think I want is Jarek McKinnon. I'll be extremely really? honest. I know, I know he's 31, but he's the one who's, who's going to catch the passes. He's the one Patrick Mahomes can trust. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I know Clyde had a lot of injuries last year and that really set him back, but right. he's, he's not the guy and, and they aren't going to pick up his fifth year. Um, I, 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 Isaiah Pacheco is a seventh round pick, you know, so, Mm -hmm. you know, if, if you have Pacheco, you know, I would maybe see how he does this year and then try to move on from him because that's what I would do with most of my running backs anyways, because the position turns over so much. Yeah. And he's a late round pick. So yeah. So, so, you know, so easily he's very much, much easier than, um, than my guy in Houston that I just lost his name and I was going to trash him for a second, oh, but that's uh, beside the point. Uh, Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So fourth round pick it, versus a seventh, it, round seventh, pick? seventh round pick that that is a big difference. It yeah, is. So right. it, it, it is, but you know, I, I, I could see them getting another guy even, even next year in the draft. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to get a running back in the, in the draft or even free agency or undrafted free agent. So yep, I'm with you. Um, so yeah, Jarek McKinnon, I'm probably with you there. The one that I, I was looking at their, their, 
stats from last year. Derek mm-hmm. McKinnon had 71 targets. So it's wild. Yeah, it's a wild. lot, man. That is that is a ton. Um, now he also had 56 catches, only 500 yards, nine touchdowns. So that kind of boosted him. Um, just looking at his scores, though, it was very hit or miss, right? Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, um, he Absolutely. started pretty slow and, and really started to pick up in the second half. That's kind of when Clyde also went went down with injury. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's just it, it's tough to invest in any of these guys. And then I, Isaiah Pacheco, everyone likes to talk about this guy, but if you look at his stats, he had 170 rushing attempts for 830 yards, five touchdowns, he had 13 receptions on the whole season. And for 130 yards, it just wasn't there, right? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, McKinnon is the only one that I want, and then I'm out for that. Um, yep. Unfortunately, like I said, I want guys to root for other than Travis Kelsey. Um, and yeah, I guess we can talk about the tight end really quickly. Travis Kelsey is the number one guy. There's not even a guy on this roster that I care about if Travis Kelsey gets injured. Like Noah Gray I, I th- is probably I the was, most interesting. I, I, yeah, I, I was about to say like if Kelsey gets injured, injured, it's gonna it's Noah Gray is 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 the guy that's that second line. Other than that, all these guys are a coin flip. Right. At, and Noah at Gray. Best. Yeah, we have no idea what he can do. I mean, he had 28 catches last year for 300 yards. Not bad, but it's just. Is he mm-hmm. going to get the Travis Kelsey workload, or is it going to then switch more to the receivers? I I don't know. It's, that's such a gamble. So Travis Kelsey mm-hmm. is the only one you want there. His time is mm-hmm. coming, though. I know people don't want to admit that he's he's hitting that age yep. that age where it's just going to go right. Um, it, it will. Thirty four years old. It could go at any time. So. Yeah, enjoy it while it lasts, but eventually, soon, it's going to come to an end. Um, yes. Now, the wide receivers here, this is where it gets very, very interesting. Sky Moore is maybe the number one guy. <laughs> Kadarius Toney. Um, MVS, I don't think he'll ever be the number one guy. I don't uh-uh. want to roster him. His hands are stone. It's just, it's just uh-huh. not going to work out. Um, Richie James, don't care there. Cornell Powell, don't care. Uh, Rasheed Rice, who they took in the second round. You know, Kadarius Toney. Sky Moore, Rasheed Rice. What are we doing with these guys? Um, I don't like any of them. <laughs> right. I'll be very honest. Rasheed Rice um, was someone I, that I was like kind of interested he, in. He, he was he was sneaky, but with I just that draft value, small, it, it, man, he's a pretty big. He's tall. And he's light. Like he's thin. Yeah. Right? Well, he, he's he's two oh four. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah, 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 yeah. So actually, he's much heavier than you think than wow. than, okay. than some of these other guys are. Um, First unfortunately, round pick. <laughs> yeah. Un- unfortunately, with Rashi Rice, he was he had a very limited route tree at right. uh, SMU. Yeah. Um, we talked about really, him with our rookie breakdown. Yeah, yeah. And like, I don't, I don't want him at all. I don't want him near my roster. Um, I really like Darius Tony. It's just if he can stay healthy. <laughs> I was gonna say if, Sky Moore is the one that I probably want the most. If if he can stay healthy, if he can stay healthy, that's the problem. Um, is he gonna, dude, is I know, year four, I know. right, or three? But but yeah, he just it's has your, not stayed healthy. I, th- I think it's your three. I think so, it's three. Um, uh, yeah, but but with Sky Moore, I can't trust Sky Moore either. I, yeah, but he was a rookie know. last year. That's the only the only thing in his favor. Like everyone forgets that Juju had like over a hundred targets last year. He was the number two option on this offense for right. targets, uh, and he was heavily behind Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I, just, um, I mean, I mean, he, he had 22 receptions for 250 yards and like, yeah. I don't think that's going to be a bounce back. You we'll know. see. It's a year two, I'm right? Just, if he doesn't I mean, do anything this year, right. he's done. But I, 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 I will say oddly enough, I do. I really like Justin Ross as a very sneaky, a sneaky guy. Um, unfortunately he, he got, he had a really bad injury in college right. that, um, it was at the end of the 2020 season. Um, he, he, he like had to miss the whole season because he had a, he had a congenital fusion condition of, on his neck and spine yeah. that required surgery. So yeah. that was a big thing. And, and, and he did play, um, it was the following year and had a, a, it was an okay a mediocre. Year. Yeah. It wasn't great. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was an okay year, but it's, it, that's coming off a major injury. Um, and, and he, he, he was, I think he was a, four or five star talent going, going into college. And yeah. He was, he was so, someone that was projected to be like a first round pick if everything yes. had stayed on track, but yes, um, ultimately did not. So 
obviously, as you can see from our <laughs> our waffling on these wide receivers, yeah. nobody knows. There is no number one guy, and that's kind of what sucks about Kansas City right now mm-hmm. for Dynasty. You could yeah. hit the jackpot with Rasheed Rice. You could hit the jackpot with Kadari Sony. You could hit the jackpot with Sky Moore. We have no idea which one is going to be, though. If I'm betting my money, it's going to be on Sky Moore. Year two wide receiver, sure. he has the potential to break out. You can say that the arguments for Rasheed Rice, the, the second-round pick this mm-hmm. draft class, you can say it's Kadarius Tony, who is extremely explosive but cannot stay healthy. Maybe cannot this is healthy, the year yeah. that he finally just stays healthy, right? So mm-hmm. there's arguments for all these guys. There's no definitive answer. And unfortunately, two of them are probably time bombs. They're going to blow up in your face. So <laughs> it's the, yep. it's the uh, Russian roulette that I don't really want to play. So I'm I'm yep. just, you know, wiping my hands and walking away. But if you're out there and you're looking at, at guys to kind of add, that's our thoughts on the wide receivers. You know, again, I have no idea which one of us is right. So uh, yeah. it could be any of these guys. Yeah. Um any last thoughts on the Chiefs before we wrap this up? Nope. All right, so this is a little bit longer, but that's the problem when you have so much amb- ambiguity with these positions that you, you know, 10 seconds on Patrick Mahomes, but you have to spend a million t- hours on the running backs and the receivers because yeah. we just don't. So Chiefs, very good roster. They're a machine. They're going to be good again. They're probably going to win like 12, 13 games yet again, like Easy, every season. Easily, yeah. I yep. don't know who other than Travis Kelsey you want to roster for Dynasty and, and Mahomes, obviously. But other than those two guys, it's a complete crapshoot. There's definitely yep. potential value. There's going to be a lot of yards, right? But we just don't know how it's going to be. Bro- it could be between five guys. You know, five receivers could have 800 yards, and that's 4,000 yards. And then Kelsey has the other 1,500. So mm-hmm. you never know with this team. Um but let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. Let us know who your number one wide receiver is. Again, if you can, like, comment, subscribe. All that just helps us out. This is the second team in the AFC West that we're breaking down. we got the next two teams coming out the next couple of days. Again, if we haven't got to your team that you want to hear about, it's going to be coming uh, later this month. Or go check out one of the other videos that we've put up already. So, That said, thank you guys for joining us tonight, and until next time, have a good night.